the time has cometh where I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of the aquaponics system that we built here. So let's start off with the pump. So here we have a cascade pump. This is an inline pump and it's extracting water from the sump tank, which is this right here. We'll talk about this um, at the end. But we have the inline pump extracting water, sucking it here. This is the outlet, pushing the water up here. And this uh, meets uh, what is called a bead filter. This is a bubble wash bead filter. Um, and then it, ex it pushes the water along here, comes up, and there's beads in here and at this portion of the bead filter where there's gonna be nitrifying bacteria that colonize on the beads. And also the beads act as a, as a, um, a screen to filter out any of the solid waste that makes its way, uh, tries to make its way past this portion. So we're gonna prevent that from going, from happening. Um, and then it comes down here, boom, makes its way down here. Then it comes across to where there's a T at. And this is where it's, it splits off at. I have it splitting on this particular system and I'll explain in a further video why I have it splitting on this system. So it makes its way here, comes underneath, comes up, and here is the deep water culture unit. You can see it's all right here. It's an eight by eight unit, and it has a, um, a ball valve uh, connected to it right here. And um, also has the outlet here, which is where the water comes and exits from. So it, it overflows here. You can see it overflowing in there. And then it makes its way underneath here. Boom, and this one comes back to the sump. So this is where it returns, back to the sump tank. That makes its way there. Let's move on over here. Let me cut this on so you guys can see. Boom, we have the water from that tea that I was telling you about. This is the same tea. It's coming up, ball valve here, control the flow, coming across the tank in a circular motion, and then it's exiting through here. This is the bottom drain here. You'll see it begin to um, exit as the water starts to overflow. See it exiting out? And this is attached to the same thing over here. It comes over here. So this one is doing the same exact thing. Just circling around, the solids come up. You can see it, this one's, the, the flow rate on this one is a bit too fast. So it comes here, exits out of the bottom drain, right here, boom, makes its way all the way across, er, back up. This is from the other tank. They both connect to the same outlet, and then they boom, make their way all the way back over here to the sump tank. And this is where the solids come in at. So all the solids are coming in here, and then they make their way through the pump, and then the solids get extracted through the pump and they get filtered out through the bead filter. So this is a bit different than, than the uh, majority of other systems that you'll see set up. The configuration is a bit different and I'll go, I'll explain more about it in a separate video but, um, and, and show you why I did a split flow. But there's, a few, there's another way that you can configure this type of setup with this filter. The configuration is determined off of this filter. That's why I did it this way with a split flow on a DWC. So, um, boom, let's talk about the, we also have this, the regenerative blower. This is what's def, uh, blowing oxygen and diffused air um, into these tubes here. And you can see it right there. There's one of them right there. It has oxygen that's the, uh, supplying oxygen throughout the entire bed. Because one thing is you have to have uh, extra dissolved oxygen added into a deep water culture unit because the roots will extract them too fast and then they'll begin getting diseases. So you have to have a, a added dissolved oxygen in there in order for your plants to not die. So you have to have that in this system here and also you can see it in here as well. The regenerative blower is putting air through here. I have it connected to this one hose going all the way across and it is supplying air to the fish tanks. You should know already that once you have the proper stocking densities in aquaponics, that it requires extra aeration. You can't just have, um, uh, uh, use just basic uh, water coming from here. You can't use the aeration just coming from, from any of these uh, bubbles being splashed against the water surface. That's not enough. So um, in higher stocking densities for this type of system, you must add some type of aeration. You must add a regenerative, regenerative blower or, um, or some type of oxygen to it but a regenerative, regenerative blower is gonna be sufficient for this type of setup. So this is pretty much it. I'll give you one last look at it real quick. This is pretty much it. This is pretty much it. Cut it off real quick. This is it right here. You can see the setup. You can see it. Let me look inside the sump tank. I didn't show you that real quick. 
and that's the sump tank that's the water level right there that's ensuring that all the water is even inside of here it's making sure that everything is even um, and you can see the inlet come here this is the um, the suction from the pump and this is from the uh, the deep water culture unit right there so boom one quick look at it right quick everything set up and voila there it is so all together it probably took it started off with two of us who did this so we built everything all of this we built the entire high tunnel well, um, we built you know all the structure in here the vast majority of it probably about 85 percent of it it took two of us to build so it took us including the high tunnel about six days six days to build everything about six seven six or seven days about a week and then the rest of the the, the last things like the regenerative regenerative blower um, I ended up doing by myself and hooking up the sump tank and the um, the water or the sump replenisher I pretty much did that by myself so that was pretty much an extra day and also uh, I forgot to show you guys how can I forget to show you guys how can I forget to show you guys the mineralization tank waste management so the water once this filtration unit once it is um, uh, filled up to its capacity it needs to be um, it needs to be backwashed so you need to be able to get rid of the solids that have accumulated in this filter here so what we do is we use this unit here as a backwash you just turn it turn the valve and then the water will begin sucking down and then it comes it'll exit out come down here a, a extra pipe that I built and then it'll make its way down to the mineralization tank and that's where all the store uh, the uh, the the solids will be stored and that's where they will be stored so that's pretty much the end of it so about seven days total to build it with two people two people and that's everything everything all the the the, the um structure you know everything that's everything over here with the with, including the structure now if it's just the system here with two people it would have taken us uh i had to say probably about a day and a half if i want to be honest probably about a day and a half because this down here took a while to do all this this is probably the 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 most time consuming part is doing this you know putting uh drilling all these drilling all these you know all these screws in here that's probably the most time consuming part but it'll probably take about a day and a half with two people in here maybe maybe a day and a half maybe you can get it done in a day it's possible to get it done in a day but you have to you know you got to be on it you got to be moving 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 and if you do it with one person i would say this is probably going to take maybe three days three or four days if you know what you're doing maybe have three or four days if you know what you're doing because you have to be able to get out here and work continuously if you want to get it done in that time frame so that's what you can expect you know to do a system like this and this right here is what i would recommend for uh this is a family size system this right here would be an ideal family size system ideal this is an eight by eight unit here it's an eight by eight unit here and this will provide you know plenty of, of vegetables you know if you grow them correctly plenty of vegetables for a family right here and then with your fish tank back here this is this is what should be like the minimum for families right here this setup this is what i would recommend a perfect family size right here and once you master this then you can start scaling larger and larger and start getting into your commercial setup but this is the this is the size system right here that i would definitely advise people to start with something around this size that's it because there's really no difference between this size here and getting a larger uh, system. It's just, the system is still the same. It's still the same thing. The process is still the same. Everything is pretty much the same. There's nothing pretty much different. If you can master this, then my friends, you can master a larger system. Don't let anyone tell you anything other than that. So start small, grow big. Start small and grow big. Woo!